Today on episode number 81 of the podcast, we've got some tips on dealing with the general public, both as a VIP and a sighted supporter. What's up, VIPs? Welcome to Life After Sight Loss Radio, the podcast helping you discover life after sight loss. My name is Derek. I am your host and resident VIP, aka visually impaired person. And sitting across the table from me once again is my co-host and resident sighted supporter, my lovely wife, April. Hello. All right. So today we're talking about dealing with the general public, you know, just the people out and about, the sighted community, most of the time we might call them. But today we're going to talk about it from the viewpoint of both the VIP and the sighted supporter because we go out, you know, a lot and we deal with general public, whether it's at church or, you know, a work function or, or whatever it might be, we deal with the general public. So we got some tips and tricks today. Of course, I can't tell you everything in one podcast, so we've got some resources for you over in the show notes. Yep. So you can find those show notes at Life aftersightloss.com slash 081. Um, in the show notes, you can find links, resources, and ways to get connected. So hop on over to lifeaftersightloss.com slash 081. That's right. So uh, real quick, before we get started, I want to let everybody know that we're seeing all of the nice comments that you're making, uh, all of the kind words about my wife. I think <laughs> I think you're more popular than I am. You're making me feel very welcome. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I mean, numerous people are like, why hasn't she been here the whole time? So I'm just going to leave and let you take the whole no, thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> but we appreciate all all the kind words in the comments. So uh, you can leave them on the YouTube video. You can send me an email, whatever you want to do. We'd love hearing from you guys. So thank you so much for all the wonderful feedback that you're giving. Uh, all right. So let's jump into the general public. Now we go out and about all, you know, a lot. We like to be out. Well, I like to be out and about. <laughs> and so it's a lot of fun. I like interacting with people, but it's not always the easiest thing in the world to interact with the general public, especially when you have a disability, because you put that white cane out there, you put that guide dog out there, people notice, and yep. then you have lots of uh, interesting interactions. interactions. So the first thing I always like to tell people is, if at all possible, to be kind and understanding, because people just don't know. There's just misinformation. So for example, and I'm going to give them the story that happened just the other day. Gotcha. We were in a doctor's office and I was telling the lady that I was going to get a guide dog. And she was like, oh, that's so neat. And she started asking me questions about it. Like um, one of the questions was, how does the dog help with the person going shopping, like in a grocery store? And I was like, well, they don't. They, you know, <laughs> it's the person's job. The dog's not like, you know, bark twice if this is uh, cereal or whatever. <laughs> but what happened was she didn't realize I was blind. Uh, because she asked me, she said, how long will you um, keep the dog? And I was like, well, you know, they have this time of, you know, working life. And she's like, well, yeah, but how long will you keep it? And I was like, well, you know, it's it's whole life, depending on retirement. She's like, well, how, basically she ended up saying, how long's the training? And I was like, oh, you think I'm training the dog. That's, right. So then I had to explain that I was blind. Then it got weird. It did. Yeah. <laughs> she started po- apologizing profusely. Yes. And because she didn't realize now... Mm-hmm. Derek didn't have his cane with him, which... Which is my fault. It's his fault. Yes, I'll take the blame. But at the same time, she was just... It was a very awkward realization for her, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she didn't know what to do. She was like, uh, I feel weird now. But in that situation, you know, we have to be respectful of the lack of education that she had and the lack of knowledge that she had. So we couldn't be like, you know degrading her to her face and saying, why didn't you know this? Or how can't you, you know, why don't you know that I'm blind or anything yeah, like why that? Why would you think that? Because on their side of things, when we filled out paperwork for that doctor's visit, they didn't ask for any medical history whatsoever for you. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't like a doctor visit. Truthfully, it was, no, I, was I was getting a TB test because I'm going to get a guide dog. And when you stay in a residential area right. or, you know, in a place like that, they need that, uh, they need to know you're so not going to infect somebody. She had no medical history. Didn't have any way of knowing that Derek was blind whatsoever. Yeah. And you know, we, we don't want to do that whole, like, and I'm going to talk about this later, but that whole like snarky comment, right. you know, we, well, not to her face anyway, <laughs> which we'll get to, you know. but it, what it showed me is how much misinformation is still out there. Like how much uneducation there right. is. Right. That's what I was going to say. Or lack of education Absolutely. at all. Yeah. I mean, pe- I mean, if people don't interact with visually impaired people, they don't know. Right. I mean, I didn't interact with anybody until I lost my sight. And so mm-hmm. I didn't know. I just assumed things. 
And so when she asked, well, how does the dog help them go to the grocery store? Well, that for you and me and for maybe you watching this, we know the dog doesn't help them find things on the shelf. And right. that seems like almost, and I say this in all kindness, I really do. That almost seems like a ridiculous question to me. You know, like, what, what do you mean the dog's going to find the can of soup? But to somebody who has no information, it's like it's like presenting math to a person who's never taken math. You know, right. they're like a two plus two. Oh, this is four. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's that kind of of like wow. That's that seems crazy to me, but not to that person. Right. And so I think it's just important to be kind and understand mm-hmm. that that misinformation is there, or that it's just simply they don't know. And know? the other thing is to take the opportunity to educate to give them you know, like you did, you know, you talked to her about the guide dog and, mm-hmm. you know, how long you would be there for training, I believe. And we talked mm-hmm. about how long the dog would be with us and, and in its lifetime at least. And, you know, you just take the opportunity to educate people because then you don't know who she's going to interact with mm-hmm. to then educate more people. Yep. And the more we can educate as sighted supporters or VIPs, the better it's going to be for us in the community. Absolutely. And I think that's a great point because that interaction she has with me as a visually impaired person is potentially going to affect the next interaction she has with somebody who's visually impaired or disabled in general. Because if I was all snarky and nasty and just berated her and such, that is going to put an imprint on blind people in general. It shouldn't, but it does. Right. And so no matter what kind of personality you're dealing with, it's like, oh, well, I met a blind person. They were awful. Now all blind people are awful. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we not, don't, and we don't want that. No. we. I want the next experience she has with a blind person to be you know, helpful and encouraging. I want right. that blind person to be like, wow, she, wouldn't, she knew a lot. Yeah, I had to go through sort of the educational piece of it, but I was able to help not only that lady, but the next blind person she interacts with. Exactly. So, yeah education whenever possible. Um, And so the next thing we're talking about with vision impaired people, but it's also the sighted supporter. I know many times we've been out together and like at restaurants Mm -hmm. and what, what is the thing that typically, it doesn't happen much anymore because I don't look very blind, but especially at first, what's the thing that happened whenever they would come to the table? Um, They would always ask you. They would talk to me first. They would say, you know, what can I get you guys to drink and expect me to order for you or even ordering food? It's like, he's perfectly capable of telling you what he wants. Mm -hmm. You know, I've taken the time and, you know, gone through the menu and decided what, you know, options there were that he wanted. And then he can make his own decision. It's not that you can't do that. Yeah. So I think that's the, the biggest thing that people do is they try to talk to me to get your order or whatever the case might be. And, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I think they would say, like, do you know what he wants? Or does he know, you know, things like that. And it's like, hello. And I would, like, lean over, like, I'm right here. <laughs> Actually, I would like the... Yeah, me. Talk to yeah. me. And and again, I think that's the lack of education. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, because I've gotten many people to speak loudly to me um, because I have a disability, so they're not sure. Like, let me speak loud and slowly to you. And it's that classic, I'm blind, not deaf. Right. You know, I can, and even, this is just a side note, but even yelling at deaf people seems ridiculous. (laughs) It's like yelling at them does not magically make them hear better, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother pet peeve. So, uh, but that's the thing when you're a sighted supporter, it's your job to be, I think, uh, to, to make it as natural as possible. Right. To be like, look, we're just normal people trying to do normal things. Well, and, and something that we talk about so frequently or you talk about in your videos is being independent and doing everything that you can on your own. And as a sighted supporter, if you're stepping up and speaking for the VIP, you're taking part of that independence away that they do still have. So maybe you can't transport yourself or, you know, sign your own signature on a line on a consent form or whatever it might be without help, but you can do so much, so much on your own. And we as sighted supporters should not be taking that away. Well, and it probably sounds like in your brain, like it sounds like you're being helpful. Sure. You know, like, well, I'll I'll just tell him what he wants or I'll just go ahead and pick this up or I'll just go and do this. And it's like, I'm being helpful. Well, yes, but you're stripping away the opportunity right. for that person to either learn how to do it, you know, if they don't know how, because there might be somebody out there who's just learning, you know, just lost their sight. And so they're learning how to do things and they don't know how. Right. And there is that little bit of like, oh, should I just do it? Should I wait? Should I whatever? 
And I think always defaulting to try to get them to do it yeah. as much as possible. Well, and and you also don't want it to turn into a habit that, you know, you've done it a few times and now the VIP expects you to do it for them. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want that expectation to be there. If it's not something that you're planning on doing for the rest of your life, you know, don't do it. Help them to be independent in, in doing, you know, whatever task or situation or interaction that it is yeah well and it's that uh old thing of give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish right that sort of thing yep and honestly when you're dealing with the general public if you're doing all the work it teaches them oh blind people can't do anything that's true too. so it perpetuates the stereotypes of blind people are helpless and they need help all the time so as a sighted supporter it's so important for you to, whether you're the spouse the parent whatever now if you're the parent there might be some you know age appropriate yeah. things going on but whatever it is it's helpful to be like, no, they can do this. So then they know how if they're out and about on their own. Yep. I just think that's really important. Don't perpetuate those stereotypes. Again, I'm sure it's difficult. You want to be helpful. You know, you want to be kind, but uh, make sure that you're allowing them to be as independent as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing, and this is kind of like another category of dealing with the general public, but it's when you have a guide dog. Um, I know that when we had a, uh, a dog in the house, um, and you know we it would go out with us it always presented unique challenges now we, it's been a while since i've had a dog and you know we talk about this in a few months it'll be a different conversation right but you know uh, for example you brought up the story the other day when we were talking about this episode of it was a restaurant that yeah. didn't want to let me in is that what it was yes it was so we went into a buffet restaurant and um they were very adamant that the dog could not come in. Mm -hmm. And Derek tried to explain that it's a guide dog and it has, you know, it can come in. He was like, no, it's okay. It's a guide dog. And they were like, no, 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 no pets, no pets. And we were like, but it's a guide dog. It's not a pet. It's (laughs) not a pet. It's working. And they just did not understand. I think finally they did let us in. Yeah, the manager had to come over. That's and be like, right. You know, no, yeah. no, and like dismiss the the, yeah. the host or whatever. Yeah, and let me in. But although they did seat me like as far away from the buffet as possible, buffet. which is annoying. Whenever you're <laughs> filling two plates and taking two plates to the yeah to the table. Yeah, and that didn't happen. I will say though, afterwards we went. I think we went to the mall, and this lady came up to us and was like, "Hey, I frequent that restaurant all the time, and if they weren't going to let you in, we were going to boycott." I was like, "Oh, I don't remember that." Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Well, thank you for your, you know, patronage. That's wonderful." But That's funny. Uh, I didn't, I that only that. that didn't happen to me a ton. But dealing with, but it's not only negative stuff. It could be positive stuff. I had many Absolutely. people want to come tell me about their hunting dogs, and you know, they they oh, I love dogs. I had a dog when I was younger, and it was a chihuahua or whatever you know whatever it was i was like and again there, kindness and understanding you know it's like yes but how annoying does that get at the it, same it does time? get really annoying like i'm just trying to eat my dinner leave me alone i don't care about your dog yeah. which is again it's all those snarky things that want to come out of my mouth which we're going to talk about uh it's like i, I just don't care but they feel connected to you in right. some way and so they want to make that human connection yeah. and and honestly i don't think that's a negative thing because it helps them to sort of bridge that gap of like blindness and sighted and sure. it's like oh well I have a dog he has a dog you know we're a lot alike well um, and, it, and it's also another opportunity to be able to educate mm-hmm. because so many people want to come up and pet the dog mm-hmm. they want to talk to the dog and really they just are a distraction to the guy working mm-hmm. and so it's another opportunity to educate them on you know what actually I would you know you can't pet the dog right now the dog's working and giving them those you know Hints for later if they come in contact with another guide dog in the future mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. Setting them up for future interactions with right. guide dogs. It might be annoying to us, but hopefully we can help out the next person that right. they deal with. Um, yeah. And so guide dogs is kind of, like I said, a, a separate thing. Not every blind person has a guide dog and everybody's going to deal with that. But there are just some general things you want to think about. Be kind. Be encouraging. <clears throat> be, you know, be the person to help educate if at all possible. Yeah. Because... You just never know who they're going to interact with next. Absolutely. Um, so, dear, what I don't get this because I can't see, but do you find a lot of people staring whenever I'm walking down with a cane, the dog, the whatever the case may be? I don't know if staring's the right <laughs> word. Like people don't like you know follow, you, like stare at you, I guess, but they will follow you through the area. Like mm-hmm. if someone, if we're walking through the mall, like mm-hmm. you were talking about earlier, we're walking through the mall and someone's, you know standing outside a store or they're sitting on the little seating areas in the mall, like they'll 
catch you and they'll follow you, you know, as we go by. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's the end of it really. And, and I try not to pay attention to them, but sometimes I just roll my eyes and like, okay, just keep walking. Just keep walking. (laughs) I know the kids like our son who is 13, he'll say things to me after the fact, like, Oh, that person was staring at you or, Oh, that they sure looked at you weird or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that happens. And now I keep telling him, just wait till I have a dog in this restaurant. Oh yeah. It's going to be a whole other thing. Completely different. Uh, But you know, that's, that's just how uh, it's, I hate to say it this way and and please understand. It's just weird to them. Like it's weird. Nobody else in the restaurant has a cane and all of a sudden there's this cane. I mean, honestly, we do the same thing if we see somebody with a cane for different reasons, but we were somewhere (laughs) the other day, we're seeing a show and there's a person in front of us who had a white cane Mm -hmm. and um our daughter who is nine was like daddy daddy there's another person with a cane up there you know it's this weird like oh we're together you know i didn't talk to that person i don't know them because we don't all know each other but it's like uh that's that's just it's a weird thing because when 99.9 percent of the people don't have a white cane and then that one person does it is something unique and it's like, what? Oh, look at that person, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people, that's the reason they don't use the cane because they're like, I don't want people staring at me, which I always tell them, well, you'll have to pretend that people are staring at you because you won't be able to see them. But that's a whole, <laughs> other, that's a whole other thing. Uh, so it, it can be just like, why are you staring? Stop! I'm a normal person. Stop staring right. at me. Uh, but it just happens, you know, because it's unique. It's kind of like if you saw a person walking through the mall on stilts you would think that's weird. True. You know, like now maybe they're part of a show and they're walking to their stage or something like that, but it would be like you would stare at them because that is weird. That's unusual. That's it's unusual. It's different. Which of these is unlike the others? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's not that we are weird people. It's just that cane draws attention. Right. Again, if you have the chance to educate, educate. Go for it. Absolutely. But don't take it as like this personal attack because generally 95, 6, 7% of the time, People are very kind. They're wanting to be helpful. They're wanting to be encouraging. They're not trying yeah. to be rude. I don't think that lady at the doctor's office was trying to be rude. I don't no. think she was trying to be a rude lady and be like, blind people suck. I don't think that was the case. She just didn't know. And so it's like, if I automatically take offense to that, then that's going to be a negative interaction. Mm-hmm. It's like, she's not attacking me personally. She's not attacking blind people. She just doesn't know. And it's my job to help her. Now, when I lost my sight and somebody said it was my job to educate people, I was very bitter about it because I was like, I don't want to educate people. Let the, why don't they know? It's like, well, I didn't know. Right. And so while it's annoying, it's still my job. It's our opportunity. Absolutely. Um, and so, and we've talked about it as we've had this conversation. It's important to save the sarcastic, <laughs> nasty things, save them for your family and for you know like sometimes we'll leave and we'll go somewhere and after talking to that lady i had a bunch of snarky things i wanted to say and you know i said them to my wife and she was like oh calm down (laughs) but you know you gotta sometimes you gotta get them out or whatever and it's important that if you have those thoughts it's not bad to say them just try not to say them to the person's face like save them for your family sometimes it's fun we'll sit around the table and you know my son and i who's again a teenager and got this snarky attitude anyway you know he's like oh that's funny and sometimes it can be funny but be cautious when you're making some of these snarky comments because you don't want to make it out to people are ignorant and stupid and dumb and anything like that right it's it's just like it's the classic thing of like have you tried glasses well my inside (laughs) voice says oh my gosh you're the first person to ever tell me that thank (laughs) god for you you know i can now see obviously that's not what you want to say to that person, right. you know, and I never say that, but I always say it in my head. Do, you know, like it's a snarky <laughs> comment. I mean, do you have, do you have thoughts like that as well? I mean, you're more of an introvert than I am. Do you have thoughts like that when people say things or, or whatnot? Of course. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can't really think of anything specific right now, but like I said, I just roll my eyes and keep walking and I try not to let them see me roll my eyes either. Cause that's probably not a good impression either. But sometimes you just can't control it. Absolutely. I don't know how you all feel, but sometimes you just can't control it. You're just like, you have got to be kidding me. That just came out of I your mouth. I can't believe you said that. Wow. Yeah, I can't believe um, it. But yeah, I mean, we, you know, we leave places where we've had interactions. I mean, even whenever we left the restaurant with the guide dog, you know, it was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they weren't going to let you in. Like, what, what the heck? You know, just yeah. like stupid people. And it's not, they're not stupid people. That's not what I mean. That is mm-hmm. not the case at all. It's just a lack of education. It's a lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
you just have to take those opportunities. But yes, absolutely. I have thoughts like that all the time. Well, and the situation is annoying, even if even if you know there's a lack of education. Mm-hmm. I know uh, a lot I've heard lately is about like Uber and Lyft not allowing guide dogs to get into the car, which we know the policy of Uber and Lyft says they have to take service dogs. I right. mean, we know that. That education's out there. You know, people that drive should know that, <clears throat> but that doesn't make the... Um, that doesn't make the moment any less annoying or awkward, aggra- awkward or aggravating. You know, you can say like, no, they they just don't know. It's like, no, they do know or no, you shouldn't. You know, and it's just like it makes you bitter and that sort of thing. So, no, the moment might not be any less annoying, but maybe that's why it's good to talk about it outside of the moment and say like, I just couldn't believe this and, uh, and just take that cool down moment yeah. away from the person so that you're not, you know, land blasting them for the thoughts that they have. Of course. <laughs> so as a sighted person, you understand the whole idea of sighted people, but it's not because they're sighted. It's because they just don't have that education or maybe they have some misinformation mm-hmm. because you as a sighted person have that information, have that education. You're going to treat people differently. Uh, you're going to assume things differently. Sure. And so it's not because they're sighted. I think a lot of people get that idea. Oh, sighted people suck. It's like, no, they just don't know. And it's not because they're sighted or whatever. You just have to give them a little grace and be kind when it comes to those things. Mm -hmm. So today I want uh, to ask this question of everybody. What, now that we've talked about, you know, our sort of pet peeves, (laughs) what is your biggest pet peeve when it comes to dealing with the general public? What things have you had? What experiences have you gone through that make you be like, oh my gosh, I just want to choke somebody? Like, what's your pet peeve and how have you dealt with it whenever you've gone out and dealt with the general public? I'd love to hear about it. You can email me, Derek, D-E-R-E-K at lifeaftersightloss.com. You can leave a comment on the show notes at lifeaftersightloss.com slash 081. Uh, You can also hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want. I want to hear the answer to this question because let's all commiserate our pet peeves together. All right, guys. So as we wrap things up today, we want to make sure to remember that one great thing you can do to make sure you don't miss another single episode is subscribing to this podcast. Yeah. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another episode. And if you're listening to the audio version, of course, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, on Spotify, all the places you listen to podcasts. And you can do that in the show notes, lifeaftersightloss.com slash 081. There are buttons right under the player and you can find us and subscribe to the podcast. All right, guys. So now we've got our quote. Now we've actually got two quotes again, because one of them is really short, but I really like both of these. And they're both by a guy named Roy Bennett, who is actually an author. Uh, I've not read his books, but apparently he does write books. So um, we've got two quotes. So why don't you give us the first one? All right. The first one is treat everyone with politeness and kindness, not because they are nice, but because you are. Because you are. That's I think good. that's I think that's the thing to remember. Like, well, they weren't nice to me. It's like, don't treat them nice because they're nice. Treat them nice because you're nice. Yeah. It's a challenge. Like <laughs> it's especially when you deal with people that are uneducated and just mm-hmm. don't know. But remember that it whenever you're treating them kindly, it's not based on their reaction to you. It's based on what you're doing to them. Right. And so our second quote second quote second quote <laughs> is is the next one. Be positive, be true, be kind. Be positive, be true, be kind. Those three statements, I think, encapsulate so much. Be positive. Life is really good. Yes, sight loss can suck, and I've talked about it on other videos, but life is good. Uh, Be true, be honest, be real about what's going on in your life, even if it's with, you know, the general public. Um, You know, those kinds of things. Be kind to one another, not only your family, but those strangers that you run into as well. Because if we can be positive and be true and be kind to one another, I think that will affect the world in very positive ways. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you so much for listening to the podcast today, wherever you are. And until next time, I want to remind you that sight loss isn't the end. It's just the beginning. My name is Derek. And I'm April. And we'll see you in in the the next next one. one.